Okay, so just looking at the toolpath of the main uh, first stage profiling of the outside and inside of the spanner, um, let's do a simulation of that. Loading the simulation page. Okay, slow it down a little bit. So first off we're going to drill holes. This is drilling um, eight two millimeter holes in the corners of the octagon. And now we'll simulate the bigger cutter, the eight millimeter cutter, running around the outside. Um, yep, that's cutting down about 15 millimeters deep. Um, where are we now? We're out of view here. Cutting the hole in the back. Uh, finishing pass around the outside. And now we're roughing out the inside of the octagon. And the, finally the small 3mm cutter cutting that important area there that's engaging on the squares of the door bar. Okay, here we are ready to zip them off in the bandsaw. I usually, I quite often use this uh, method of uh, two per piece of stock if you need two or multiples of two. It's a good way to make parts. Just a, a piece of stock deep enough for the two parts and a bit of vice holding. Then you can just machine one, flip it over, machine the other side and then just zip them off in the bandsaw. The old dual bandsaw made in America more than half a century ago. Okay, it's been cut off in the bandsaw and um, slab surfaced, and now we're just going to. Profile, profile out the inside and um, put a chamfer on it. Ooh, cutting oil everywhere. And finally, the chamfering cut. Um, just a little six millimeter dull carbide cutter that I ground on that same diamond wheel on the bench grinder. The parts are located with an end stop so they can be just flipped over and quickly reset to position. two octagonal ring spanners all done. Hopefully no more wear now on my drawbar. There's a handy location, a little um, screw that you can remove, a 5mm metric screw and put in a longer cap screw um, just for a convenient place to hang it so you're never out of reach. Speeds up the tool change process a little bit. Thanks for watching.